Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, we made a promise to you that we were going to bring in the candidates for the United States Senate and the governor's office, that is, Pennsylvania candidates. We'll let somebody else deal with the national, other candidates from other states, and then we're going to have a transportation update. All of that following these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, we're going to start this series of interviews. We're, we've invited, as I said, we're going to have all the candidates in. They're welcome here to come and spend 15 minutes or so with us, chat about the issues. We have uh, Peg Luxick, who's sitting right across from me. She's a candidate for the United States Senate. She's a Republican. She'll have to face Pat Toomey. Now, that's it. We're not going to mention him anymore. So we won't bring up the, we'll give Pat his, his chance to come on the program as well. Peg, welcome to the program. Thank you. All right. First of all, let's talk a little bit. Now, you, you are more identified with state issues. I mean, you've run for governor in 1990, almost upset the Republican Party's I did. candidate, came within a hair's breadth of winning. You've been active in gubernatorial elections, but now you're running for the United States Senate. A little different office. What, what makes Peg run? For this office or in general? Yeah, no, well, no, for the Senate, for the Senate, the, the switch here. Um, you know, at this point, the argument's in Washington. Yeah. We've come to the point where Washington has so invaded the states that the states are basically provinces to mm -hmm. the federal government. So if you want to change the structure of government, you need to go to Washington to right. do it at this point. Hence right. the run for Senate. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit. First of all, you know, the Republicans actually did pretty well. As a Republican, you must have been pretty excited about the elections yeah, last week. Well. You know, you won six of seven state uh, appellate court races. You won the governorship. Do you think, because you're running now for federal office, do you think there was a bigger message than a lot of folks are, are articulating about the results of that election? Do you think this is a message to Washington, or is this just a typical sort of off-year election with no bigger message? No, I think there was a message, because when you couple that with the number of people going to town meetings, the number of people going to tea parties, yeah. and those numbers are growing, they're not shrinking. People feel like Washington doesn't listen, and they're desperately trying to get the attention of elected officials. How do you get the attention of elected yeah. officials? You change the fannies in the chairs. Yeah. Well, our inspector, of course, who's, you know, if you would win the primary, you would, well, who knows, he has to win his own primary, that's a little more complicated, you know, said that some of these town hall meetings were among the most raucous and, <laughs> and that the folks were really, that the folks were in his face, to put it bluntly. I mean, he was even surprised at the, at, at the, at the uh, groundswell, yes. uh, the turnout that existed at some of these town hall meetings. Many of them, I think, opposed to the to the national health care reform, the debate that's now underway, and also to spending and the growing deficits as a result of the, you know, stimulus and other proposals right. that comes out of Washington. So let me ask you this question. Specifically, let's talk a little bit about things like the stimulus, General Motors bailout, uh, before that the investment, the, uh, uh, the TARP money. The, the TARP money. How, if you have been a member of Congress, would you have voted for those measures, if not why? No, absolutely not. In any capitalistic society, the market, sometimes you get bubbles and they need to correct. When the government steps in and attempts to prop up the bubble, all they do is make the bubble bigger. Eventually it collapses anyway, mm -hmm. but it collapses with a much bigger bubble. The picture when I talk to kids about it, do you remember the movie Miracle on 34th Street oh, and sure, Santa Claus is blowing oh, the yeah, bubble and it yeah. gets bigger and when it finally pops it's all over his face and his beard and his hair. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the government's doing. Yeah. When they try to artificially prop up an industry that needs either to be corrected because they've, they've made some bad decisions or perhaps even to go bankrupt. When the government steps in and attempts to prop it up, mm -hmm. it never works. Mm -hmm. You just make the problem bigger. Well, that then, I mean, it's obvious that Senator Specter, who was in your party and has now switched now, you know, has voted for all of those things. How important, uh, I mean, and, and he's now got a 92% voting record of support of the, pres of, of, of the president's agenda. Yeah. How different would you be from Marlon Specter? Kind of night today. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You know, let's you talk a little bit about the senator and his town meetings and how raucous it was. Obviously, doing what I'm doing, I'm doing lots of town meetings. Mm -hmm. And I've done a bunch on health care. Right. Nobody yells at me because I bring the bill to the meeting 
and I've actually read it. And you show how t t tall it is? And when, yes, and it's big. Yeah. And I actually changed the margin so I didn't kill quite so many trees. So the yeah. Nancy Pelosi bill that's 1,900 pages long right. is, in my version, 1,000 because I made the margins bigger. I got it. But read the bill. Right. So when someone in the audience says, I have a question about, I can say, you know, that's right here yep. in this section. Let's look it up together. Right. Let's look at the words. Now let's talk about talk the about words. When you respect the voters, they respect you back. All right, I'm talking with Peg Luxick. She's a Republican candidate for the United States Senate. We'll be back with uh, Peg following. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is sponsored by Citizens to Protect PA Jobs. When businesses add jobs, people prosper. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. I'm chatting with Peg Luxick. She's a candidate, a Republican candidate for the nomination of her party to the U.S. Senate. Uh, you don't have a Republican U.S. Senator. I almost said, you know, it's an old habit, right? You're saying, well, challenging, uh, well, you know, Arwen Specter. Well, he's now a Democrat. But at any rate, look, one of the, you, you've been identified for a long time, right or wrongly, and I think probably more right than wrong, with abortion. And, you know, you've been a crusader against abortion rights. I don't hear, is, is that still a driving force for you? Or do you think at the moment these compelling other national issues are more more like on your radar more on the agenda it's part of who i am yeah the the idea that government should recognize that every life is sacred is kind of fundamental to a nation that says that you come into this world with inalienable rights if we believe that every life was sacred we couldn't be having a health care debate right. that included rationing right so it's it's kind of an an underpinning issue for me. Over the years, I've been involved in lots. You sure. know, I was I was one of the leading uh, opponents of outcome-based education. You know, look, right. trying to hold education to academic standards instead of the touchy-feely mm -hmm. stuff. I was one of the people who uh, was involved in the emissions testing in Pennsylvania years ago. You were right. going to have to go to two places. That was me yeah. that made that yeah. turn away. I've kind of built my career around protecting the little guy. You okay. know, at five foot two and so you're, ahem, so pounds, you're a I kind pop, of fit so you're, <laughs> you're, The word populist in you would come to mind, right? I guess right? so. Yeah, well, that's I okay. So. I don't think that's a bad word. I mean, you know, populist, you know, you're sort of running against authority and against the power structure, you know, that's sort of the American way. I well, think. And, you know, we have a government that's gotten way bigger than yeah. it should have gotten. Yeah. And we are seeing the results of that. We're seeing a debt that's out of control. We're seeing a deficit that keeps mm -hmm. rising. We're seeing health care that is just insane, the yeah. debate in Washington. And, and w even with the stimulus bill, what we basically had was senators like Arlen Specter saying, well, I panicked. We mm -hmm. had to do something. Well, you know, if you're in a hospital emergency room and someone comes in sick, I had to do something, you could kill a patient yeah, doing that. Yeah. That's not how government's supposed to work. But Washington is now so big and so out of touch and so out of control that we really need somebody to stand up for the little guy. So let me, let's go through a couple things. So if you, if you were the United States Senator, you would not obviously vote for the current, the, the bills that are being merged as they now are being merged in both the House and the Senate, correct? Correct. You would not, how about the cap and trade on the energy side? I would be side? against it. You would be against, how about the Defense of Marriage Act? Senator Specter is, now looks like he has changed his mind and is now against it, right? He was for it, yeah, now I'm he's against it. it. You would be for the, def you would yes. vote to keep the Defense of Mar uh, Marriage Act. Now, let me, I'm um, for it in an, the best situation is that states do that at the state mm -hmm. level okay. because marriage licenses is supposed to be a state sure. issue. But you can't have a situation where you're married in this state and not married in that state where one state's using a political agenda to force feed it down the throats of another yeah. state. So sometimes you have to standardize okay. definitions and that would okay. be one for it. How about comprehensive immigration reform? Something that, you know, could come up next year, but it could come up, you know, in a term if you were elected senator. I'm absolutely for immigration reform. Mm -hmm. We need to close the borders. We need to get rid of incentives. We need to take criminals who are illegal immigrants mm -hmm. and deport them. What to a, what say about, comprehensive, would, right I now they're doing that. it and they're calling it amnesty. I, that would what not about be for the me. 15, let's say we have 15 million immigrants here 
illegally, would you put them on a path to citizenship? What do you think ought to happen to them? Should they go back to where they came from? I think the first thing we need to do is find out who they are and where they are, mm -hmm. and then decide based on information what we do with them. I'm mm -hmm. not really in favor of someone who entered illegally being put on a path to citizenship, mm -hmm. but neither does that mean we round them all up, put yeah. them in the nearest plane, and send them across the border. I got it. We need information. I got it. Uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you one other question. You and Pat Toomey, and you know, I don't want to do it. I wanted to make sure we let you get your positions out. Y you and he seem so similar. No, we're not. Uh, okay, now go ahead. It, why aren't you similar to Pat Toomey? You know, the other guy running for the Republican nomination. Well, for one thing, I'm much prettier than he is. So <laughs> well, you know, we have to start with the important stuff. That's true. Um, <laughs> We're different in our approach okay. to politics. Mm -hmm. Pat's a, a Washington guy. When he got out of Congress, he stayed in Washington. He's a Washington right. insider. I'm a Pennsylvania girl. Okay. And my whole life has been spent here in the state fighting for the people of Pennsylvania. So we're different in our okay. focus. We're different in how we approach economic issues. Pat's background is with the Club for Growth, and they're mm -hmm. the multinational corporations, and he's a total free trader. I've toured over 70 Pennsylvania factories with more every day mm -hmm. who are telling me we can't compete with people who cheat. Right. Trade should be fair. Fair, so okay. So we, we come at okay. that totally differently. We come at the social issues differently. I believe that that maintaining the fiber and the structure of family is an integral part of any reforms that we make in government. Right. Pat doesn't want to talk about family. He only wants to talk wants to talk about money Economics. issues. Mm -hmm. When we get to the taxing issues, Pat talks about eliminating earmarks and a tax cut. I'm looking at a $13 trillion debt, a $1.8 trillion okay. deficit, and saying, guys, the conversation's way I, past I was that. Not, you, boy, you have, the, you have the differences, and I'm sure we're going to hear more about you that. Are. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks. Transportation update following these words. See you in a minute. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, Check out ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program for a transportation update, the infrastructure uh, stimulus. This is all sort of wrapped up into what, what kind of a modern economy we will have joining me as often as the case. He's sitting right here is Bob Latham. He's the executive VP of the Associated Pennsylvania Constructors. And Dave Patty is the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Business Council. I got that out. Bob. Very good. Let's turn right. to you. Look, okay. we've talked about this before. Bring our folks up to date. Funding for infrastructure. Ro we're talking about roads and bridges. Woefully inadequate, Terry. Um, the uh, American Society of Highway Engineers, of course, has, has, has uh, graded us with a D as a country and with a state. We've got lots to do. Um, the Governor's Commission in 2006 said we need to spend a billion dollars more than we do per year. Mm -hmm. We've funded about half of that with Act 44. Um, inflation has eaten into that. The stimulus mm -hmm. program, which everybody thinks has solved the problem, really hasn't. Our industry now is down about 20 percent in employment. It would have been a disaster without the stimulus, yeah. but it's not really good. Yeah, I mean, so, so David, we got a kind of a twin problem here. On the one hand, we know it it, it, it could create jobs, right. which is the purpose of right. the stimulus. And, and but secondly, how can Pennsylvania compete without a modern infrastructure? Well, we got. I mean, you're go right. ahead. I mean, it can't because sure, we we care about other things like taxes and a trained workforce. And, and the regulatory climate, but if you can't get your raw material in yeah. and your employees in and your products out to the markets, you're no good. And 16% and, and of our economy is still manufacturing. Um, and even for, for people with office jobs, I mean, you need to get to work. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, just to haul goods, goods and services, I mean, around the state, Who's going to bring it? Who's going to bring you? You want to start a new business? What's the first thing? Yeah, well, can, can I? You can you get that? It's right. not just manufacturing. Right. I mean, you, I go and you look on the high. Go ahead. Logistics is a big, uh, big um, industry here in Pennsylvania. We're looking at putting in some new uh, rail facilities mm -hmm. into the Chambersburg area, but we don't have a highway to get the product off and yeah. on those rails there. So we yeah. have to have connectivity we, we have between our modes. Too, uh, you know, one, one is the maintenance of the current roads, as right. we all know, Pennsylvania is renowned for its potholes. You know, and the second is capacity, and everybody. 
somebody who's been stuck on the Schuylkill Expressway or on the Parkway or in the Beltway around Harrisburg mm -hmm. or even I-80 knows that, that we just don't have enough lanes. We can't mm -hmm. get through the state. And yeah. we are the Keystone State. I mean, everything comes through here. Yeah, and what you're saying, just so our viewers have a clear understanding of this, is that there, there was a commission a couple of years ago that recommended more than a billion dollars a year to be put in a huge number of roads we have. Right. And we're now down to, what is it, $450 million or something like that that we're putting in each year, and it should be double, if not triple that? Right. Go ahead. It's not just, not just the highway system, but also mass transit uh, was, was looked at by the governor's yeah. commission. And, That's right, uh, mass transit and, as well. And Act 44, which was passed in 2007, basically provided about half of what the commission. So you've got half of a half, basically, is what's, uh, what's been provided. That's to maintain the status quo. That's maintenance money. Yeah. That's not new capacity. Exactly. All right, look. We, uh, uh, I want to get into this. We'll, in the next segment, I want to talk a little bit about public opinion and all that. But right now, one of the ideas, and it, boy, it's controversial. And you know, the Rendell administration started this in that earlier, and it didn't get approved by the federal government. And that is to do this business of of, of tolls on the on Route 80, runs across the northern part of the state. If you want to go from New York to Ohio, and you're a trucker, it, particularly, where, where do you where do you go? Well, you obviously got you got to go across 80 or well, come all the way down, down and go across and, the turnpike. And right now, that's mm. another issue. The Rendell administration has gone ahead and asking the Federal Transportation uh, Department, I right. guess. Am I right about that? Right. Yes. But, you know, administrations going back to the Shap administration have toyed with the idea of, of tolling I-80. Is this a bad idea? Um, no. I, I, th I think tolls are a very appropriate idea. Yeah. You know, they started with the, with the turnpike saying, well, the federal government is, is going to do all the interstates, rather, in, in the yeah. 50s. And we'll grandfather the turnpike and a few other roads. Uh, but we don't want you tolling those. But today, the federal government is not putting the money in yeah. for the maintenance of those All roads. right, we're going to break. When we come back, we'll continue with this discussion following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Penn Future, where we believe that every environmental victory grows the economy. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. I'm talking with Bob Latham and Dave Patty. We're going through all this business about uh, where we stand with mass transit and with funding roads and bridges and repairs and infrastructure. It all wrapped up into one. Expensive, but needs to be done. I think everybody agrees. All right. Now, truth be told, in my other career, in my other life, I do I do polls. Everybody knows I'm a pollster, and we did we did some research and. Uh, the public pretty much, based on the research, is fairly supportive of, of, of infrastructure funding. Is that correct? Absolutely. And I think one of the problems that we talked about in the first segment has come about because we haven't sought a comprehensive solution. Yeah. We haven't really gotten to the problem. We've done these piecemeal things, sometimes pitting region against region. When we asked the question, your, your people asked the question, seven in ten Pennsylvanians said they're willing to pay for better, inf for better highways, better, mm -hmm. better highway infrastructure, mm -hmm. but they have to see, they have to see the results, and, and that's only natural. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that's Go held ahead, up in polling over the years. Yes. People understand that, that roads, bridges, uh, other parts of infrastructure are, are public goods. They, they yes. expect, that's a basic function of government, and they expect to pay for it. They also want, though, a quality road that is safe, well-maintained, and has mm -hmm. the capacity they need. And Pennsylvania, because it's, it's, it, it, it has this unique feature of having so many miles of state run. Do I got that right? Yeah. Exp I mean, an 45,000 miles. How much? 45,000. Plus, I mean, we're a huge state. People tend not to think about it. You, and, and to get around, I mean, you go. So is in, and, is in and of itself the number of miles of roads that we have. And we didn't talk about bridges. You didn't even, we didn't even get into that. 25% of them in some state of structural disrepair. Doesn't mean they're going to fall down, but 
But some have. <laughs> but, but some have. But yeah, we know. Unfortunately, yeah. not. You know. Go ahead. No injuries here. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Well, the, our uh, the uh, the age of our system, our geography, which requires a lot of bridges because we have a lot of mountains and valleys and so forth, uh, requires a huge amount of the funding that's available in order mm -hmm. to just keep the system alive. And what we're seeing is uh, we we are not uh, not seeing from our elected officials a plan that is going to fund things mm -hmm. like needed expansion, uh, uh, needed safety improvements on, in, in, in some cases, uh, on some of our more rural roads and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, but when you ask people whether they are willing to pay to for pay that, more for that yeah. the answer is yes, but if they can see that it happens. D D David, let's be practical about this. Sure. Look, we're talking about, we're in a recession, state deficit, budget deficit, as Bob points out, stimulus money, not all it's cracked up to be. Right. Helpful, but not all it's cracked up to be. What options exist? Well, now, you're I mean, the policy yeah, wonk. The, the, you're the, the policy wonk. There are very few options. I mean, traditionally, we've used a gas tax. Um, so, I mean, that, that's another way to pay for it. The theory being that the more gas you use, it must mean you're driving more. Well, it's also the vehicle you have. And, in fact, federal mm -hmm. policy, energy policy now is pushing us towards more fuel-efficient vehicles, yeah. which means that people less. will pay less in gas tax, so get less revenue, but those vehicles still take up just as much space so on the road, still do just about as much damage to the roads. All right, so we have gas, I'm going to come back we to you, so we have, we, have, we have gasoline tax. We have tolls, to and, tolls? and uh, or, or general revenues, and, and we know well, what that's. Well, I think, so, I think the blueprint was laid out by the Pennsylvania Economy League in 2006, and they said, basically, we are going to have to look at some sort of increase in the fuel tax on a mm -hmm. short-term measure. Tolls, or what are known, what's being talked about as mileage-based fees. Yeah. How, you know, how much? Mi well, uh, essentially, uh, you're charged for how many miles that you drive. Now, there are pilot projects going, pilot programs going on in some states to see whether this is can be done efficiently. But the bottom line is, when you drive on the turnpike and you have an Easy Pass transponder, you're being charged for the number of miles that you drive on the turnpike. The technology. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. The way. technology yeah. is there. And, and uh, in fact, when you think, look at those rate classes on the back of your turnpike. Ticket, don't forget, they're also adding more more cost to you for weight yeah, because weight yeah. does more damage. So, so I mean, so you, can okay. look, so you can look. At, you can look at that. And again, it's a matter of the user pays and you pay based yeah. on what you use, as yeah. opposed so to just our, paying taxes into something yeah. and not knowing where it's yeah, going. Yeah, we're, we're about out of. Time, but the bottom line here is that we're talking about the requirement for a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. People okay, people say, look, this is important. We're willing to pay for it. But we, we still yet don't have the, the, the mechanism, right? Right. And, and I think the, pe the thing people need to understand is I-80 is not maybe the perfect solution. But it but is the a law solution. doesn't allow right. to do other things. I think David gets the last word. We're out of time. We'll come back. We'll get back Absolutely. into this. All right. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well. And they're going to stay here.